Thanks for joining us here on 9 News Plus. I'm Chris Bianchi. Now, when you think of NASA, you're probably thinking astronauts, space, but you might not realize that NASA is also home to the largest group of Earth scientists in the entire world. And with more than 25 satellites in orbit, NASA tracks critical changes all over the globe. So here to celebrate our home planet on Earth Day is NASA senior scientist Liz Hoy. Liz, thanks for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. And of course, this year marks the 53rd celebration of Earth Day. Can you share some of what we're learning about our planet, especially of late? Yeah, you know, when, when people think about NASA, they often think about rockets going up to the moon or to Mars, but we really do. We have so many satellites that are looking back at the Earth. And as we celebrate the 53rd Earth Day, we've had satellites up in orbit for over 50 years. And so that's really giving us this long-term picture of how the Earth is changing. We're able to see changes with our atmosphere, with precipitation or with uh, understanding wildfires, looking at air quality, so really all different parts of the Earth system. And Liz, I'm, we're, we're obviously speaking from Colorado, so I kind of specifically ask you about wildfires because that's obviously been a big impact for our, our friends here in Colorado. Uh, how does what have you learned about how climate change could affect wildfires now and moving forward? Yeah, I, I'm really glad to talk about this, and I, it is something that's very important to me too. Wildfires is what I have been studying at NASA, and NASA has satellites that are looking at understanding where wildfires are, when they happen, how large they are, how, what the intensity is. And we really are seeing, we're seeing wildfires that start earlier in their growing season and last longer as, as the climate is changing. Just we have these drier conditions, so this fuel is more available to burn. One thing that's really encouraging, though, is that we can get the information to wild, land managers very quickly. When we have these satellites overpass, we learn about a wildfire. Land managers can be texted that a wildfire has happened so that they can better mobilize resources and get out to a fire and take care of it. And that's certainly a huge service. It's something that I know has come into play within the last couple of years. Uh, we've also, this past winter here in Colorado, we saw some pretty stark snowfall amounts here in the southwestern part of the state. I know California had a crazy snow season as well. What would you say about these extreme weather patterns and how they're shaping our thinking about climate change? Yeah, you know, often when people think about climate change, they think, oh, everything's going to be warmer all the time. But what we're really seeing is we're seeing more variable weather patterns, more of these extreme events happening. We don't always know exactly where they're going to happen or when, but we almost just know we have to expect these extremes. And so we see this with hurricanes that might have uh, more rainfall in them or uh, with wildfires that are longer or more intense, uh, all the all the snowfall you mentioned, all of these different factors come together and we're seeing these these extremes and these variable weather. And what specifically is NASA doing and perhaps devoting more resources to to try and uncover some of these mysteries about how climate change affects extreme weather? Yeah, so with, with the satellites that we have in orbit, we have 25 up there now, looking back, trying to understand the different pieces of this puzzle. And then, of course, we're always planning for what missions are going to come next. And so we try to take the information that's really, uh, we're, we're trying to better understand where we're going. So we're using all of the information that we have now to better inform what satellites are going to go up next. And uh, being, being uh, talking with community members is, of course, one way that we do that. I suppose I've got to ask about some of those upcoming missions and upcoming satellites. A a anything that we may look forward to in terms of that um, potential future tracking from future satellites? You know, it takes so long for satellites to come online that this, this planning process can take many, many years. But we're, we're really trying to make sure that as we're looking back at Earth, we are being sensitive to what is happening with our climate, what's happening with our environment, and understanding different parts of it. One new satellite we had go up this year is called TEMPO, where we're looking at air quality across the United States. And so this satellite is just focusing on the United States, looking at where we're seeing air quality changes throughout the day and throughout the season. So we can see when people are driving to work and back, we can see uh, what's happening in urban areas. And of course, this has big implications for human health. If we think about respiratory issues with poor air quality or uh, you know, perhaps heart issues or other kind of health impacts from air quality. So really trying to understand that right now too. Uh, of course, it's highly relevant for us here in the Denver area, one of, the, unfortunately, the more uh, polluted metropolitan areas here in uh, across the United States, unfortunately. What, what have you learned in the last couple of years about air quality and how it affects our day-to-day -day lives? Yeah, we're really seeing these changes as people drive to and from work, where we're able to look at 
how the air quality is changing and where we see spikes in, in poor air quality uh, throughout the day and even really throughout the season. So as the summer comes, of course, you're going to get more of these heat island effects and more urban, uh, more urban areas might have uh, poor air quality problems. And so we're really also, we're also able to even track, as you talked about wildfires in your region, we're able to track where wildfires are occurring and the smoke plumes from that, those wildfires and how they Im influence air quality. So we're able to, that, that smoke can travel thousands of miles. We're able to see that with our satellite imagery so we can better uh, prepare communities or even help to just understand what's happened in communities as wildfires have burned. Obviously, hugely important and helpful to us here in Colorado. Uh, I suppose on a more optimistic note, uh, where can our viewers go to learn more about the Earth and also how to celebrate it? Yeah, so I know personally we're going to be going out and taking some hikes as a family to just enjoy Earth Day and enjoy the wonderful weather that we're having. Uh, you can go to nasa.gov slash Earth, and we have some recorded webinars. We have some videos with uh, astronauts. There's some crafts and activities that families can do and, and folks can, can use to learn more about it. Well, NASA senior scientist Liz Hoy, thanks so much for joining us here and giving us some insight about uh, Earth Day and some of the advances that NASA is doing, especially in light of uh, climate change. So thank you so much for joining us today. All right. Thanks so much for having me.